Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's eSpeaks, we're discussing artificial intelligence, including the key trends driving the market this year and how companies can move their AI deployment forward. To discuss that, I'm joined by Pranay Agrawal, Chief Executive Officer and Co-Founder at Fractal Analytics. Pranay, very good to have you with us today. Very nice to be here. Thank you so much for uh, having me on this uh, talk, James. So it seems like artificial intelligence is a challenging topic for companies. First of all, it's, it's a complicated technology. It's not like many of the technologies that have come before. It's expensive, uh, com but companies know they need to get on board. They see the train leaving the station. They realize we need to deploy AI, but they're not sure how, and they're not sure how much it's gonna cost. What, what advice do you give companies that, that wanna get started with AI or, or, they're, or they're new to it? Yeah, look, I think first and foremost, uh, it's great that companies have started to get the realization that this is not a good to have, it is a must do. It's no longer about whether I can get better, it's really about that I will get uncompetitive and I'm gonna lose if I don't uh, do this. I think the most important thing about this is not really the technology uh, or the data. Uh, those are all absolutely important ingredients, but really to start with a strategic vision and idea around why do we need this? What are the critical problems that we are trying to solve for as a business? What are our business priorities? And then moving backwards from there to ask, how can this technology help us? If you look at companies that are consumer facing companies today that have subscription based relationships with their customers, one of the biggest questions today is that, how do we engage in a frictionless manner with our customers? How do we give them a great customer experience, whether they're coming for service or for e-commerce? As you know, that there is tremendous amount of movement to digital. And we know that you know, the cost of human to human interaction is going up. Uh, so people are moving to digital. That's a smoother, faster experience. How do we make that happen? I'm just giving an example over here, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I'm a manufacturing company. I think one of my big questions is that, how do I forecast my demand accurately so that I'm prepared to service my customers? How do I uh, manage the supply chain better so that I'm actually able to get the products in the hands of the customers, right? So mm -hmm. being able to first and foremost, having a very clear idea that what are the strategic priorities for our industry and for our business? Where do we want to take our business? What metrics do we want to drive? And then, having got an idea of that, then moving backwards from there to say that, how can AI help us? Mm -hmm. And then if we know that how AI can help us, then you move even further backwards to say, uh, actually a one step before that, you know, what decisions do we want to take? And then saying, what kind of insights do we need? Move back from there to say, what kind of AI can support those decisions? And then you also need to know what kind of data and engineering you need in the background. So actually it is a lot simpler than it sounds. If you start with the technology, it's complicated, but if you start with the business issues, I think it's easier. Well, all right, following up on that, I mean, do you think that, uh, I mean, our companies are looking at AI and they say, you know, we like that. We like we like looking at our initiatives and seeing how we can fit AI into it. But the question is, it's expensive and they're not sure it's, you know, you need to dive into that pool. You've got to spend some serious dollars. What, what do you say about the cost issue with like, how do we handle the cost issue? How do we get around that 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 hurdle? Right, and again, I would say that it can be expensive if you look at it in isolation. If you look at it in terms of the key business problems that we're trying to solve for, and if you're able to sort of estimate the cost savings or the upside, mm -hmm. then you can invest accordingly, right? Okay, if there's a program that's gonna give me a $100 million benefit, and of course that's a theoretical benefit till I've seen it, but can I invest half a million dollars upfront to see whether that potential can be unlocked? I think the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Now, if you say that I want to invest $10 million upfront, uh, not knowing uh, what results are going to come in uh, till let's say 12 months or 18 months later, then we have an issue. Mm -hmm. Technology today is enabling you to do that, to run these short experiments. You don't have to set up a massive infrastructure yourself. You've got the uh, cloud providers, they are providing you you know, elastic, scalable uh, cloud facilities. They're providing you uh, these licenses and software tools, open source or licensed, available on the cloud that you can buy and use as you need. 
So I think your ability to run experiments, small, short duration, low cost experiments that can tell you whether you're going to get the benefit or not, and therefore you're not putting out millions and millions of dollars up front, not knowing whether you're going to get any benefit out of that. I, I think that's the key part of it there is, is the idea of a smaller, shorter term experiment uh, that, and, and we see, well, that, that works, we can build on that. Uh, let me get your sense of, of the market in terms of trends this year. If you would pick out one single biggest trend driving AI this year, wh what is it in your view? I think one of the biggest trends in the ways in which uh, AI has changed in the last three or four years, and we continue to see that acceleration now, is that the realization that AI is not enough to deliver value from AI. And you need this deep integration with engineering and design. You need that integration with design to ensure that you are solving the right problems, that you frame the problem appropriately. And the solution that you're going to deliver is going to be intuitive and easy to use and that it will integrate well with your existing processes and technology. And then the second aspect of that is engineering. That what we're doing, we are setting it up not to be a little a cottage industry kind of a project, but something that we do as a POC, but something that will scale very rapidly across these large multinational organization with billions and billions of dollars of revenue and hundreds and millions of customers, right? And that is, the, that, that is one of the biggest trends that we're seeing, that this deep integration of AI with engineering, with cloud and with design to ensure that not only are we seeing the, 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 the possibility of the benefit, but we are actually able to implement it and get that big benefit. All right. Well, all right. Following up on that, what about cloud computing and artificial intelligence? I think there's a, some people say that the, the big three cloud providers, Amazon, Microsoft, Azure, Google Cloud, will sort of win the, win the AI wars and that they will be the providers of AI in the future. Uh, do, do you agree with that? And, and or in, in overall, what, what is the relationship between AI and cloud these days? Yeah. So I think cloud is a big enabler of AI. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that is because it's, it's scalable, it's elastic. You can spin up services very, very quickly. You can spin down the services very, very quickly. And uh, the cloud providers are providing great uh, algorithms, great technology on top of the cloud. Now the notion that someone will win the war for AI, I, I find that a little sort of, uh, uh, because there's always gonna be people that need to go out and execute. People that you, you don't you don't buy that that assertion. I, I don't necessarily buy that, right? Yeah, maybe as the providers of cloud and maybe as providers of technology, uh, but enterprises will need to continue to do this, and they will do this, and there are going to be infinitely more problems than can be solved by a handful of people. Mm -hmm. All right, let's focus on uh, your company, Fractal. I mean, what what are a couple of use cases that the company has supported in terms of an AI deployment? What what matters about Fractal that we should know about? Yeah, uh, look, I think, <clears throat> firstly, this whole idea that we're about decision backwards, it's not technology or data forward. So it's always about starting with what are the business problems? What are the business problems specific to your industry and to your company very specifically? And they vary, whether you're a financial services company or if you're a technology major, you're a telecom operator or you're a consumer product company. And that really matters, right? And, and having that notion. Uh, focusing on the big ticket strategic problems. You can get caught up in the small and fancy, uh, but I think the focus companies need to see that the focus is on the big ticket large problems and, and we, we work and, and focus on those areas. And the notion of bringing AI engineering design together, I'll give you a simple example here, right? You're a large corporation, you have a large sales force. Uh, how do you ensure that the sales force is having the right conversations with your uh, customers, right? They can have theoretically, uh, you know, hundreds of different conversations because you have so many different products. Uh, let's say I'm a bank and I've got, you know, multiple different products. How do I know what is the next best action for my customers? What's the next best conversation that my uh, CRM force should be having with the customers, uh, which is in the best interest of the customers and also enables the bank to uh, improve their business, right? And uh, that is something that uh, uh, we're helping our clients with using AI at scale. Uh, that's just one example. Uh, or, you know, I have thousands of SKUs of products in my, um, in my product portfolio as a consumer goods company. 
How do I forecast the demand for each one of them? How do I know what is going to be the demand in different retailers in different uh, geographies uh, so that I can ensure that uh, I have the right amount of product for my customers to buy? Uh, these are all very, very important uh, critical problems for our clients and, and we're working on, on these problems. So if I think about Fractal in a sentence or so, I would say that, that Fractal does AI consulting and building. Fractal does this and like, what, what, what if I, what, what is Fractal's mission sort of boiled down, if I may? Yeah, our mission is to uh, power every decision in the enterprise using AI engineering and design. Mm -hmm. Organizations have, you know, thousands of decisions to make, small and big, and we are helping our clients make those decisions better using AI engineering and design. And those better decisions will translate into better outcomes for their customers, their employees, uh, their supplier network, their shareholders, and the communities that they work in. So Fractal is actually literally building the, the, the AI software applications, custom AI software applications for enterprise companies. Yes, that you could absolutely say that, yeah. Hmm, great. Definitely a market for that. Uh, speaking of which, the future of artificial intelligence, that's a, that's a zillion dollar question. So obviously we know that AI is growing very, very rapidly. I mean, I think the last figure I, I heard was 38% a year compounded through the year 2030. It's just, you know, a torrid pace of growth. Yeah. What will AI look for, like in, in the future? Say we're in, you know, 2025, 2026. What, what's going to be going on with AI then? And, and, and how can you help us prepare for it now? Yeah, look, I think uh, we're on this journey around making better decisions, driving more automation, creating better experiences for our customers, for our employees, for shareholders across the, uh, across the world. And I think that at least for the next four or five years, while there's going to be a lot of innovation, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, companies uh, getting through the basics hmm. of uh, digitizing their customer experience and e-commerce and making them frictionless or with less friction than today. Mm -hmm. uh, digitizing their sales and marketing efforts, pricing, promotion, supply chain forecasting, risk management and stuff like that. So I think we're going to continue to see a greater and greater infusion of AI as we speak of in the large uh, corporations. So I think that, that that's going to continue to happen. Simultaneously, I think we're going to continue to see a lot of uh, really uh, game-changing innovation, let's say in the healthcare space. You know, we've got a company called Cure.ai, Q-U-R-E.ai, where we are providing instantaneous diagnosis and x-rays using deep uh, learning technology. Okay, something that can support uh, radiologists and that can uh, help patients where uh, there is a short shortage of radiologists. And we continue to see uh, all of these kinds of innovations in different fields like healthcare and uh, uh, education and, and so on. So I think we're going to continue to see on the one hand, uh, a lot of infusion of AI into the basic processes of large corporations. And we'll continue to see innovation in the areas such as healthcare and environment and education and so on. Hmm. That's neat. I think it's going to be a very interesting sector to follow. Uh, Pranay, thank you so much for sharing your insight today. It's really interesting. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, James, and have a good day.